I'm Kirsty van Gogh. I work for uh, an organization called Neil Butcher and Associates. We're based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, my work at um, NBA has focused on the use of open licensing and how we can ensure more storybooks are made available in underserved languages. I've also done a lot of work in um, understanding how we can support the implementation of the UNESCO recommendation on open education resources or OER. So I think the main benefits of open culture um, are, uh, from my opinion, come from the point of view of the legal framework that's provided by the Creative Commons uh, licensing. These licenses allow the, the copyright owner to specify what can and cannot be done with their work. So um, I think it's important that um, content is properly findable and correctly marked so that users will understand what they are able to do with content. Um, Africa as a continent is underrepresented in global digital knowledge networks. So I think this includes uh, African people, cultures and languages um, in online spaces. So I think that it's important that African voices are heard to be able to reflect the rich and valuable history, languages, people, and communities on this continent. Um, so I'd say in addition to a lack of um, African content, African narratives are also written by people outside of Africa. And this enforces biases on the content which Africans engage with which Africans engage and how it's represented. Uh, so I think that being aware of how opening up cultural and linguistic artifacts from African organizations, especially, and making them findable online might change how we are represented in um, online spaces. Uh, more than this, I think it's really important that increasing uh, production, access, and awareness of contextually and linguistically relevant content um, and knowledge from Africa uh, will encourage young people to kind of develop their true sense of self based on their own heritage rather than what they're seeing from, um, you know, like what we do see online. So some of the barriers to open culture, I think, include how we um, are confined about how we think about culture through the lens of education. It's possibly exacerbated by education systems that are not systematically developing the skills of young people that are needed to contribute to global knowledge networks, like creativity and critical thinking. So I think that cultural industry should be separate from uh, education. And I think we kind of conflate open culture and open education and OERs and a lot of you know, the open that we're kind of pushing for. Um, on top of this, aside from the, the cost and the time it takes to build the capacity to enable the use of online platforms and to understand how licensing works, I think another barrier is that organizations are afraid to kind of feel like they're letting go of their intellectual property and make things available online. So I think that's why it's important to understand how the licenses provide a legal framework for how um, owners of content will allow their work to be used. And um, I think this is a really important aspect. So I work a lot with um, Dr. Kim Osigwe of the African Library and Information Associations and Institutions, or AFLIA. Um, and the way Kim has opened up my eyes to um, the use of open, especially in libraries, um, you know, libraries are more than books, they hold so much power in communities and they can like um, really like preserve the history of communities and I think we don't really quite understand how to do that yet. So some of um, Kim's projects include um, 
the One Live, One Ref project with, Wiki, uh, with the Wikipedia Foundation. Um, and that's just um, also, again, making sure librarians understand Wikipedia and how they can be represented in this space. Um, Kim is also uh, dedicated to making children's books available in their home language and uh, we work with her to we've created a, a course for librarians and part of that course one aspect of it is understanding open licensing and how you can use resources that other people have created and find them and make your own resources and I think it's just like a little step um, towards opening up the kind of uh, cultural knowledge and history of uh, people across Africa and just giving uh, librarians a little bit more power in this space rather than um, making people think that, you know, libraries are just where we find books. I think if anybody is considering how to open up collections, I'm just speaking from my little corner of this um, community. I would say just making sure you understand how the licensing works and how it can um, enable you to share content and make it available and make it findable rather than just um, not giving people like in your community access to this content. <laughs>